Hello, everybody. Welcome to Happy Health Wife. Welcome to my kitchen. Let's go ahead and get started. Now, I know I promised you rotisserie chicken dish, and that's going to come up. But first, it's cold where we are right now. It's a little chilly. So we're going to make some soup, some nice vegetable soup to go along with our uh, spinach, chicken spinach feta wrap. So let's go ahead and get started on that. Um, stove is right here. Let me go ahead and gotta get some vegetable shots first. Again, there is a link, top link in the chat. If you wanna follow the recipe, see the recipes that I'm gonna be doing today, only two. We're gonna have chips on the side and some mac and cheese, <laughs> mac and cheese. Some, uh, what is that? Macaroni salad that we just bought from the store. So that's where that's coming from. But so you can always go to the website. There's a link in the chat pinned to the chat. If you want to click on that link, you can go and see the recipe as it is. And if you want to follow along and make it yourself, you're welcome to it. Otherwise, so let's go and get started. Let's get those. We're going to do celery and carrots and onion. We're going to chop those up. Uh, so if you're new here, just now checking out this channel first time, welcome. If you've been here before, welcome back. Welcome back. Yeah, so I tend to, oh, these are not good. A little too old. So I uh, use this time to show you what it takes to make recipes in real time. None of the edited stuff. So I'm anticipating this will take about hour 15. And it'll be ready with meals. Most of the times we take in on the soup, it takes a while to, to simmer for quite a while. Uh, sometimes I use onion. Sometimes not. 
I remember the rest, you might have had onion powder. Let me take a look at the, on the recipe right over here. What did it take was going to? Here we go. There we go. There's my recipe. Vegetable soup. Oh, I'm not going to use onion. That's fine. We don't need onion. Sometimes you use it for flavor. But not for this. If you want to have onion, chop it up nice and finely and go for it. Decided not to use onion today. It's fine. Perfect. And if I actually want to add celery to the... Oh. Hmm. oh, I know. I turned you off. That's what I did. All right. Uh, celery. Celery. Celery and carrots. We want them sliced thinly. So that they saute nicely to add some flavor for the vegetable soup. And the recipe you see on there is like a recipe for a whole family. But since we're down to three, probably gonna do half a recipe. Bring out the cutting board. Beautiful. Got the celery right here. Let's see. I know it probably says like. We're just going to two stocks, should be plenty. Most of the vegetables, flavor, it's going to come from, or most of the vegetables in the dish are going to come from frozen vegetables. Very nice, easy way to do it. Okay. And those will definitely need to be washed. Put those in the sink to wash. Oh, another one came out. Okay, so we'll do three. And today we are going to use. Not the full star vegetable chopper. I know I've used that a lot with you guys. And I know that video is one of the most well liked videos. But no, today we're working on something different. We're going to be working on a couple. One carrot is plenty. I mean, that's going to be a lot of carrot. A lot of carrot in our soup. This is what gets the good flavor for our vegetable soup. Uh, so no, full serve vegetable chopper is not going to be used today because we want thin slices. So we're going to use my other favorite, the dash safe slice. And another thing that we have going on the channel, I have a wonderful video on the 10 recipes that we're going to use, 10 recipes you can use with Costco chicken. Now let's go ahead and rinse off the vegetables first. And this is number 11, actually. Today's recipe I found recently on a magazine called Eating Well. Something new with rotisserie chicken. Yeah, this vegetable soup, I might have put it with a vegetable chopper. I can't remember. It might be in that book that I made. And you could handle your vegetables that way, vegetable chopper. Personally, I would prefer to do it the way we're gonna do it. I'm gonna slice them thin. Makes them look, makes them easy to cook and taste really good. The oxo one is the one to go. It makes them taste really good. Yeah. In the soup. So first gonna peel the carrot. No big deal. You've all peeled carrots before, yes? Some well, of you haven't, you just take your vegetables peeler and peel. I usually peel over the trash can and hope I don't drop the vegetable in the trash can. Yes, that has happened. That's really actually the whole family. Happy Healthy Wife does that too. HHW does that too. She, when it's potato peeling time, often she's the one peeling potatoes and just puts the peel straight into the trash can when we need peeled potatoes or something like mashed potatoes. Uh, this, though, on the other hand, not using this vegetable peeler at all. I think it's it for the vegetable peeler for today. Ah, uh, there we go. And it's good when you're doing celery to break and try and get all those ribs out. I prefer ribless celery as much as possible. Now, I won't get all the ribs out doing this method. But you get a lot of them, especially if you are trying to do 
vegetables for uh, like a veggie tray. It's much easier on the your guests if you take out said strings. Wonderful strings. Yes, there we go. And the next one. Oh, let's see, I should probably change. I mean, I usually don't have enough people chatting in the chat box to worry about it, but I sometimes forget to change from top chat to everybody. Because, let's see, top chat, let's switch that over to live chat. There we go. Live chat. I put on live chat because I just don't get a ton of people chatting in the chat box, so I don't really need to monitor it so much. And, you know, it's not as the most popular streamers, you know, it's not sitting there and flying by. So, you know, don't need top chat. So it's like to slice off the corner of the edges. And let's do the same with the carrot. Slice off the corners, the edges. There you go, it looks nice. Oh, I love the carrot, I'm good tasting carrot. There we go. And so these are also ready if you wanted to put them into uh, you know, just have some dip for them. Dip them in, that's good. But we are going to make soup. So let's go ahead. Move you over there. And take out my favorite way to make thin slices. The dash safe slice. Yes, that's actually where we store it most of the time. So I'm going to set up my dash safe slice. Oh, let's see. Yeah, let's turn you on so that you can see it up close. And let's adjust the up close camera. I guess it is perfect. There you go. Now you got the up close camera in the corner. All right. So the way this thing works, it keeps your hands away from the blades. The blade is take out the capture tray. The blade is in here, right in here. We are not going to be touching said blade. Not even close. So we gotta set up. So how thin, how thick do we want it? We hear that it's got suction cups, so it doesn't move. All right, let's see, we don't want to put out the juliennes. We don't need a julienne. Let's see, currently it's set to like two millimeters. It's actually a pretty good setting for this. You can do it as thin or as thick as you like, you know, one millimeter, zero, don't want to do zero. One millimeter, two millimeters thick. I think it's millimeters, or is that centimeters? Ooh. I think it's millimeters. I think a good two millimeter will do fine. The other thing is, these are gonna be really tall when I put them in, so like that. So I'm gonna cut them down to size a little bit. Besides having in there, okay. The same height is actually preferred. If you do them all the same height, that's perfect. But uh, it's not easy to do. Do half the carrot. Beautiful. All right, so now we can set it in. Because what's going to happen is we're going to slice them. It goes right on in. Perfect. And then you take your pusher. It's going to push it down. Then you run it through. Now we can take a look at the thinness of these vegetables. Hold on. See how thin they are. Is two one millimeter and thin enough for me? This is how thin we got it. Nice and thin. I think one uh, two millimeters is a good thinness. We'll keep that setting. And you can push it down. I'll let you see the back side now. This is the back side, how they actually go in. Blade comes down, vegetables come off. Pusher is here so that they all can go down to the slicer. Uh, that's a good amount of celery and carrots for us. It's just the three of us right now. The one thing that the, is troublesome with this uh, dash safe slice, it doesn't always slice them exactly the way you want them, but it does a fairly good job. Fairly good slicing. You can see it's very biased slice on the 
celery. So we'll finish those up, make them a little less bias sliced. But that's going to do a good job. Depending on how long you want them. All right, when I put the pressure on it, made it a little more bias sliced. That's why I did that. But we'll go with that. That will work. This is mostly for flavor. <laughs> well, the whole soup is for flavor, right? What I mean is it's mostly to flavor the oil. So let's get that oil started. Let's see, I need some garlic too. Let's get a couple of cloves of garlic out. Why? Because I'm also going to need it for the other dish. So I need a clove of garlic after it's cooked for a while. So when I get it ready, put it in. Got a couple of cloves of garlic. We're going to garlic them. Crush them the way that I like to crush them. With the beautiful cheese grater. A good cheese grater. A good thin cheese grater. Works really well. Uh, so we're going to first open up the peel. A nice little smash down helps loosen up the peel. So we can peel off at our peel to get the inner garlic. So yeah, basically right now, you see, I'm just cooking just like a Sunday afternoon as if I was doing this for my family. Well, I am doing it for my family. What I mean is I'm you know, nothing special. The only difference between this and me cooking it for my family is that I'm streaming it live so you can watch me do it. Exactly what we would do a nice Sunday. I usually on Sundays I choose meals that take more work. This doesn't make this work. Why do I choose meals that take more work? Hmm. Oh, how much tomato soup do I want? Let's see. Biggest. Ah, let's go middle. Middle sized pot will be fine. I need a lid for it. So let me find a lid that fits the lid. That's not that one. No, so usually I will spend more time on the Sunday. Or Saturday to cook. But today, because uh, I was probably doing something simple. Your soup was just going to be the wrap. And then I said, you know what? Let's add something more than just the wrap. Let's add. Some soup. Is it in here? Aha. Uh, I think that's the bigger one. No aha. I, I assure you, we do have that lid size for that pan. Back. Sometimes things are a little lost, especially. Let's try this pot. Might be in here. Nope. Oh, I did my best to find a lid. You know what? Where's my favorite lid? Hmm. There is one lid that we have that fits all pots and pans. And that one is missing too. That one's huge too. Huh. Where does that one go? That one's not here. We gotta look. Those cast iron skillets are really heavy. Let's go all the way back here. We got here. Nope. Well, don't wanna waste more time. So we'll use a lid too big. And we'll find the right size of lid later. Oh, weird. I know it's too big. 
One more shot. Aha! Oh, both lids. <laughs> um, I'll show you the favorite lid. Let's go. Let's make sure it's washed off a bit. I want you to have this lid works. It works on all pots and pans of all sizes. Or it should. It doesn't. Look at the real lid. There it is. See, look at that. And it's designed to fit on big and small. I like. Oh, perfect. Okay. Ooh, we got a lid. We got a lid. We're lit it up. Now that we're lit it up. Beautiful lid. <laughs> For our soup box, we're going to put it in here. Our portable stove. There we go. You can see it. Forgot I'm using a different software. I'm supposed to click the transition button so that the other camera is on. I was at the wrong feed. Okay, so there we go. Uh, we're gonna turn it on. Gotta lock in the butane canister. There it is. Oh, that's hot. Yeah, we don't need it that hot. like this thing can really get hot. We do not need that hot. So we're going to put in some oil. Like a tablespoon-ish. Beautiful. Now I'm going to let that heat up a bit. Now as we start cooking, you feel the heat. Let me look at the recipe for a second. Three or four minutes while we're cooking it. Uh, I need the broth, tomatoes. We're only using one can of tomatoes today. Frozen vegetables, probably only two cups instead of the one thing. Then we need to get the pasta out too. Four ounces of pasta. Um, gonna eyeball it. We'll see. Need some pasta. Now I didn't specify what kind of pasta. Well, actually, I think I said shells. But you can choose whatever pasta you got. Whether you got some shells or not, you can use them. See if I got any shells. What's this? I know I have tons of spaghetti. I don't want spaghetti in my soup. Ah, perfect. Tiny shells. Alfie, Alfie, daughter's favorite. Tiny shells. We need some tiny shells in our vegetable soup. Add a little bit to vegetable soup. And since it said four ounces, we're actually going to weigh it. Oh, that's feeling pretty hot. Ooh, I can feel the heat. Let me turn that down a bit. Oh, I, meant, <laughs> I turned it up. There you go. All right, so let's put in the celery and the carrots. Cook for about four minutes. Mostly for the flavor and the oil. Because celery and carrots they have a sweet, especially carrots, a little sweet tint. Well, that's going. Gonna rinse out. Dash safe flags. That's all we need for just that only. Now, because of, I have Costco tissue chicken. You know, I could be making this to a chicken soup. In fact, can you make, it's frankly the same recipe we have for chicken noodle soup. So that's all it took. Dash they put it out, rinsed and cleaned. Let's see? For the most part, it's rinsed out and cleaned. See? There we go. 
Anyway, so we're already getting the smell of the carrots. And let's take, uh, here we go. It's six minutes. Yeah, it's about six. That's still really hot. It has butane campfire stove. It is really easy to get extremely hot. I think it's in color there. Get down a bit. Don't need that hot. It's good. Mmm, you can smell the sweetness coming out. Can of tomato. Diced tomatoes. And our can of diced tomatoes. What else does it need? Garlic, it's already out. It needs frozen vegetables. And it needs some chicken stock. Now, this would be the perfect time to tell you that one of the great uses of the Costco history chicken is that you don't have to buy this stuff. You can make your own chicken stock. But, and we bought the Costco history chicken, we used it. We already made our chicken stock. Oh, that's too low. Let's go find it. Already used it up. Drank some wonderful soup, chicken broth soup, and chicken broth and rice, and wonderful rotisserie chicken flavor inside because you do the bones. Yeah, that's actually my next video coming out. Is how to take the carcass of the chicken. The carcass of the chicken from the Costco rotisserie chicken or any rotisserie chicken you buy. We get Costco because we're members of Costco. And because their chickens are $5. I mean, where else can you get $5 chicken meat? Already cooked, ready to go. So whenever I'm doing any recipe, often that calls for cooked chicken, it's a Costco rotisserie chicken. I actually kind of plan it in the reverse. Um, we only go to Costco every other week. And every other week when I go to Costco, we get the um, rotisserie chicken. Not every other the week. I mean, sometimes I might skip a week. But so then I figure out, okay, I'm going to the Costco dish again. So let's see, what two dishes can I make this week using that Costco rotisserie chicken? I mean, I have 10 of them. Oh, I should have put that link in the live. I've got 10 recipes, at least, that uses Costco rotisserie chicken. Um, chicken quesadilla is wonderful with it. Chicken empanadas. Chicken enchiladas. Those are all good. Chicken salad sandwich, any chicken casserole, almost any you can dream of go in there. Chicken pot pie, the ones we're doing this week, it's the chicken wrap. So it's kind of like, in a way, this is kind of like chicken salad. Uh, but it's a, a chicken wrap with feta and spinach. And we are doing uh, the chicken pot pie this week. Some weeks we use chicken empanadas. Oh, it's a wonderful time because Happy Healthy Wife gets to wrap, well not wrap, yes, well kind of. I put in the filling, she closes up the empanadas, and then we bake them in the oven, because we got the oven version of the pie, pie crust, of the empanada crust. Uh, that's getting pretty cooked, so I think it's time to add the clove of garlic. Let's use the smaller one for the, the wraps, we'll use this one. Beautiful, wonderful. Let's get that garlic in there. Oh, I can already smell it. And cook this for about a minute. So we're gonna cook this for about one minute. Don't need to cook the garlic very long. It's just going to. Boom. Oh, I forgot, I'm gonna need to get a bay leaf. I need a bay leaf for this recipe. And if you, well, if you watch Ethan Jabowski, I think that's his name. I don't know his last name very well. It looks like Jabowski to me. He did a whole video. He does a whole bunch of good videos. Some that I've watched and really enjoyed, especially like his take, his take on uh, canned chick, chicken, canned tomatoes. 
and which one's the best. He encouraged me to kind of try some of the more expensive ones. But I have found out that I just don't have expensive taste for it when it comes to the chicken. That's so getting a little burnt. Okay. You gotta get the garlic. Nice. Working good. Okay, there we go. Garlic, I can smell the garlic when you smell the garlic. You're pretty much good to go. It's time to, what I like to say, stop the frying process. And how do you do that? With some good old chicken stock. So now the frying is done. We want some nice chicken stock. We can actually turn the heat up now. We're gonna boil the water. So I know it says like four cups. Chicken stock. This box itself is a quart, which is four cups. But I don't think it was full. If I had used the oven had been used before. Anyway. Can of tomatoes. I know it says two cans, but we don't need two cans. Oh, look at that. I didn't see all that. Yeah, thank you, Master42. I'm glad you like the channel. I'm glad I think it's going to be delicious. I right, guess it's gonna be delicious. All right, straight you know. I know it says two cans of tomatoes. We're just doing one. Yeah, that's plenty of liquid there. Plenty of liquid. Don't need more liquid than that. All right, now we gotta add in the flavorings. Oh yeah, that's beautiful. Look at that beautiful red color. Don't need a second can. And that recipe that's listed there is listed for long, uh, bigger, bigger, bigger. This is weird. <laughs> listed for uh, bigger recipes. So I'm looking at the recipe again. Corn broth, add tomatoes, and the bay leaf. Yeah, I need the bay leaf, I know. Um, it's just two cans, low sodium chicken broth. Oh, it's a lot. Yeah, you know, we did like half of what's in the recipe. Still need a bay leaf. And I said four ounces of pasta. Honestly, for that recipe, eight was fine too. I, I didn't want it to be a pasta forward dish, so that's why. Uh, bay leaf, bay leaf, bay leaf, bay leaf. Here we go. And basil. I'm pretty sure it said basil in there somewhere. If it didn't, you know what? We're gonna use some fresh basil. Why? Because I have a whole bunch. Now this is the funny thing. You see this uh, bay leaf container here? See, this is what I really don't get. Take a look at this. So if I pop the top, there's no way I'm getting a bay leaf out of there. Bay leaves are too big for that. You gotta unscrew the lid. Uh, I've had bay leaf containers that work differently. Let me show you a full bay leaf if you've never seen one before. Full, there we go, full bay leaf, there you go. The full bay leaf. See, now that will not fit through these little holes. See, the ones that I usually see, I guess like pretty much open. You pop the top and the whole thing's open. There's no way this is fitting through that. There you go. In goes the bay leaf. I was going to put in dried basil, but you know what? I got some fresh. In fact, I got a lot of fresh that I haven't used for a while. Right, you go there, you go there. Uh, ooh. Okay. Let me bring it over. This is only one of the potted plants I have with basil. A lot of, oh, I can smell the basil already. A lot of fresh basil. It's actually starting to flower a bit, unfortunately. I really want to see the basil up close. There you go. Look at that basil. Beautiful basil. That's a lot of basil. And often we use it for a caprese salad. Maybe. Haven't made that in a while though. So I take out the kitchen shears. You should always have a nice pair of kitchen shears. 
cut off a little basil. Let's cut off, um, let's see, right here. So I've done it before, but when you cut off basil, and I'll show it to you up close. So where I cut, so let's show you this bird right here. So you cut it right above these two leaves coming out. So I, that's where this is cut, right where these two leaves are coming out, because that way, you see all these flowers, we're not going to borrow those flowers. When you cut it there, what's going to happen is it's going to sprout two new stems right where those leaves are. Two new stems are going to come out. And it will make some wonderful more basil. And you can see where I've done it before. Let me see. Ah, right here. Perfect. So right here, right in this one. See, I cut off the middle, and it sprouted from those two leaves. Now, so we got our basil. Let's wash it. Because we should. Uh, let me show you the best, my favorite way, to put herbs, fresh herbs, in your dishes. Neither kind of covers them. So what I do is I just grab the basil. Whatever you got. Maybe it's cilantro. Maybe it's basil. You grab all the leaves that you're going to use. And we're just going to cut them in. Easier than trying to knife them in. Cut them with a knife. Which releases all the oils, the flavors that come out of the freshness of the leaves. By cutting them up. Now, usually you don't cut up the bay leaf. Why? Because you're going to take it out. You do not want to eat the bay leaf on its own. And there we go. Now I got some fresh basil. Okay. The recipe I know called for dried basil. Or it just called for basil, didn't it? Did it specify? Did I specify? I said. Whoa, celery. Oh, well, it's not in there. Back. Crushed garlic. Hmm. Could have sworn. Add basil in the recipe. Add crushed garlic and saute. Corn broth and tomatoes and the bay leaf. Huh. Weird. Anyway, well, there it is. There's basil. Now, if you want to add some MSG, you do that now. Or if you need salt, man, I think it's need some salt. Honestly. I need to use some salt in here. Not in the recipe, it's funny. It's uh, not an old recipe. Well, it's actually, it's kind of an old recipe. It was number 10 when I looked on my videos. This is recipe number 10. So we're trying to get it hot. Let's put in some salt. Yeah. And pepper. Now right, let's do some salt. Put in like a nice, there we go. Oh, it's starting to boil. Perfect timing. Okay. Good timing. Too much salt. Let's get in some pepper. Now, you're not supposed to do this directly over like I'm about to, but because of steam, beautiful. Beautiful pepper, beautiful salt. Oh, oh the flavor did go. All right, ooh, that's really hot, so now we're going to turn it down. And this is where the lid comes in. Oh, no, 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 it's actually vegetable time. All right, vegetable time, then we cover it, that's what it is. After vegetables, we're going to taste the broth, see if it needs anything different. So we'll keep going. Now, our favorite vegetables. Oh, good, I got some open. Our favorite vegetables to go in this. Oh, no, no, not those. Carrot, corn, and peas. Sometimes green beans. I don't think I have any green beans in here today, though. There, this one? Yeah, peas. Okay. 
I'm gonna have to open the other bag of peas, though. It's a nice vegetable soup. Heavy on the broth, fine on the vegetables. We open some green peas. Because they're frozen. It cools it down quite a bit. And corn. Hmm. Do you want all this corn? Now it's green peas a little bit. We like corn. It's gonna have the pasta in there too, so I think that should be enough corn. So I'd say put about two, I put about two cups in there. And the recipe is the recipe. So if you read the recipe, that is really where you're gonna go with this. I first see him doing it by how full this thing's gonna be. All right, now let's bring up the heat again. Why did the heat die down? Because all the frozen stuff just cooled the broth completely. Right? Yeah, that's a good. Oh, that's good. All right, let's put the rest of the uh, frozen corn back. And these rubber bands are nice. See, what's going on here is these uh, bags to keep them from going in the freezer everywhere. Nice rubber band. Whoops. Rubber band it up. Oh, I can hear it boiling again. Rubber band it up. That'll keep it from flying everywhere in the freezer. Keep you from having to clean up the mess. Yeah, so you know, and often we can taste, uh, I can go ahead and taste it now, probably. Get a tasting spoon. By the way, since it's a family, I can go ahead and just taste straight from, right? So I'm just going for my family. I wonder how I'd do it if I was doing it for friends. I'd dip in the ladle, pour it into the spoon, and taste the broth that way. She needs anything. Out the gate. That's a pretty good broth. We're gonna have to wait though. As I'm saying now, that is a pretty darn good broth. We're gonna have to wait a bit. I'm gonna put the lid on it. Get the heat up faster. We're gonna move it aside. in the house. All right, so I didn't have to use the other chicken stock one. Because this is enough soup. Oh, it's gonna be so nice in this cold weather. So yeah, even though it's spring, if you didn't know, spring started on March 19th of this year, partly the leap year. Even though it's spring, it still takes a while for it to warm up. If you ever wanna look it up, there's a nice chart about Temperature versus, you know, seasons. You'll see the hottest months are like at the end of summer. That's the way things are. Okay, so I can see it's starting to boil nice. All right, so let's let it simmer. We're going 10 minutes on that simmer. And we'll periodically check, see how much we got. Move this out of the way. So that you can see the next thing coming up. I'm gonna weigh out the noodles. It says four ounces. And trust me, <clears throat> four ounces is gonna be plenty. Four ounces will be good, actually. All right, so what we do is we put this, okay. I'm gonna put this right on, bowl right here. Gonna hit the best button in the world, tear. So the bowl is five ounces. Tear, oh, come on, tear. Click on tear and it's gonna zero it out, perfect. So this I can get four ounces of shells. Let's see how much that is. Maybe I want less, maybe I want more. I think I might only want two ounces. I 
That looks like enough. The shells will expand when we cook them. That two ounces is fine. So you realize, tear. So what I am doing here is I am adjusting the recipe on the fly. That's the recipe for at least, you know, like a good dinner before, at least. All right, let's see it's nice and slowly simmering there. The liar. Beautiful. Beautiful. Now this lid, I love it. My brother actually is the one who first found it. I love that lid. Why do I love that lid? Because it works on every single pot and pan I have in the house. Well, almost everyone. Got a little steam vent too. It's beautiful. Okay, let's put it there is good. Right, let's put nice to simmer. As low as I can get it. Ah, and the soup again in like a Ten minutes, 10 minutes or so, we're gonna taste the broth. Well, basically, what, let me put this, this is gonna happen. So we're gonna keep the soup going. We're gonna keep that soup going. And it can just sit there and simmer while we get everything else ready. That's the great thing about a nice soup. Yeah, you can just let it slowly boil. Wow, that's still really hot. Let's see if I get it lower. Lower. Lower, 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 lower. Okay, that's a beautiful simmer. There we go. Let me show you where the simmer is. How it's simmering. Bring it back over. There you go. Nice little simmer. So you've got a nice lid here, keeping all the heat inside. Now this is, he has different levels, so you can do it at different size pots. The only thing is it doesn't bow up, so if your pot's over flowing, it doesn't work really well. It has to be let lower than the pot, but otherwise, it works great on almost every size pot you got. Set that aside. Hmm. Seems to be some uh, liquid over here. It's cold liquid, too. Ah, uh, it's dripping from the, from the lid, I see. The lid, it's coming out the lid. That's fine. Uh, next, what's the next? It's time for the wrap. And before I get to it though, I need to get the chicken. So let me go grab the chicken in the other refrigerator, I think. So you're gonna, gonna cut it out in a little bit because it doesn't go through walls. I tried. Let's look at the chicken. So what happens is we buy the chicken. Sometimes we eat some of it, sometimes we don't. But then we put it into a nice container, mix up the different meats. And we go, then we chop it up, put it wherever we like. A beautiful Costco rotisserie chicken. Now this is only half of the chicken we got for that. And it's a lot. It is a lot of chicken. One Costco rotisserie chicken gives you a lot of chicken meat. I you know for our family of four, makes two meals. So let's see, so that's, what am I gonna do? We're going to go to the recipe, of course. Again, the recipe is in there. It is the top link. Let's see, chicken, all right. So you got, I need some Greek yogurt, some feta cheese, uh, sun-dried tomatoes. Oh, this one has the dried basil. Oh, that's what it was. It was the other recipe that had dried basil. That's why I was thinking, you know, why do dry? I'm gonna get some nice, ooh, that's nice. That's nice for a side. Oh, yes, this will do nicely. Um, anyway, sorry, we're thinking ahead. We're thinking ahead to the sides for the actual dish we're making today. 
So what I need, I need tortillas. I need tortillas. I know I didn't say tortillas. Oh, there's the tortillas. I need the chicken, got the chicken. I need the feta. So one of the other reasons why I wanted to use this recipe is because I used feta in a different recipe recently. Add some leftover. Was that from the one we did together? The shakshuka? I bet it is. I bet that's the same feta from my last live. Nice. Don't waste anything. I need basil. I got that. I need feta. I need yogurt. There we go. Greek yogurt. Oh, Greek yogurt. Uh, let's close this for a minute. I want to think about other stuff. I got some other things I'm going to show you in a bit, but I did want to show you. We're lazy here. I mean, this is, oh, look at that, chicken pot pie. One of the recipes we're going to use from Costco right there, chicken pot pie, right there. So that's the one we'll be doing. Although we have our own recipe for the filling, but you saw I have the peas and the corn. That's not all the peas. I have another bag of peas sitting there waiting for me. But I use this for the pie crust because I'm lazy. And Pillsbury pie crusts are really good. Yeah. So we can use that. But that's for Tuesday's dinner. So see, tonight's dinner is half of the chicken. Tuesday's dinner is the other half. We fill the rest of the vegetables, so it's really good. What else do I need here? Let me see. Uh, basil. All right, I'll get some basil. Lemon zest. Got the garlic clove. Crushed red pepper and some ground pepper. Okay, good pepper. Let's get the crushed red pepper. Ooh, we feel spicy, aren't we? Not that basil. We're gonna, I'll cut off another stem of basil. Fresh basil, right? And yes, right. It's better than dried basil. It will be better than the dried basil. Let's see, let me double check. Perfect. Uh, right here looks good. We'll use these melts. Boom. Perfect. Another set of fresh basil. Oh, I can already smell the fresh basil. All right, let's peel it off of the stem. The stem's a little too tough to eat. So we'll peel the leaves off of the stem. This might be a little too much of basil, but oh, no, no, no. No, 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 it's not too much basil. It should be a good amount of basil. Wash them off. Oh, look at that. It is raining. Look at that. It is raining outside. Oh. Weatherman said it was going to have thunderstorms. And, well, it really didn't look like it, but here we are. It's raining. It's coming down. And I got our basil. So I guess, yes, there it means in blas. Why? Because it all goes in one spot. Uh, so we got the feta. Oh, I need sun dried tomatoes. That's what I forgot. Sun dried tomatoes. Name the scissors back. Thank you. Sun dried tomatoes. We'll check on the soup. Whoops. In a bit. Sun dried tomatoes. Beautiful. <laughs> They're packed in oil, too. Actually, the oil is very flavorful. If you ever get sun dried tomatoes, part of the reason why you want these because it comes with the herbs and the oil, and that's very, that oil is very flavorful. It really livens up your dish. Let me see, let me double check. Um, oh, sun-dried tomatoes. Got the basil. Lemon zest. Lemon zest. So, how do you do lemon zest? You need first, you need a lemon. Find a lemon in here. I hope I have a lemon still. Oh. Fortunately, I still have a lemon. Okay, okay. I mean, not many lemons left, but still have one. A little zest of the good part of it. And we'll cut up the rest so happy healthy wife can have it in her tea. Well, she will slice up the rest. I that one. Some lemon zest. Okay, so now I need a bowl. Put all this stuff in for the filling. Uh, oh. Whoa, that was a little loud. Now let's see. 
That looks like it's gonna be big enough for the chicken I want. Should be fine. Should be good. Another thing I need. I forgot. I need spinach. Check out. Yeah, it's still nice and slowly simmering. It's beautiful. Let me just let that sit while we get everything else spinning. I must have. I bought spinach. I forgot. I bought the real thing. Running by the real thing. Usually when I buy spinach, I buy the bags of spinach pre-washed, ready to go. But this time, we bought the real thing. So we gotta wash it. And spinach is notorious for having lots of, um, how shall we say, lots of sand. So we're gonna take out some of the not so good spinach leaves. There we go. The not so good ones, there we go. We're gonna wash the spinach and get it ready. Let's see. You are not so good. Now this is a lot of spinach. I'm not gonna use all of it, honestly. How much spinach does it say? It says two. It says four cups of pack baby spinach. So there's four cups of this stuff, so there's a lot. You can use as much or as little as you like. It is a definite good addition to this wrap. Some spinach, you know it's also a good addition? To the soup. So you know, we're gonna use all of this spinach. What I don't use in the wrap, I want the soup. But fortunately, in our vegetable soup, the spinach goes last. If you didn't know, that's generally how spinach, that's what you do with spinach, you do it last. All right, so let's wash the spinach. In fact, we're gonna use my favorite instrument for washing vegetables. You know, I should show you one of these someday, make a video of it. A vegetable spinner. It's, it's where it's at, I'm washing vegetables. I probably have showcased it before. But let's put in all the spinach. I'll take out some of the bad ones. Which means the bad leaves. All right. Oh, let's see. Sorry, I should let you see what's going on, right? Right, 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 yeah. I think I'm pulling out some of these bad ones, see? Doing this. I can feel the greediness here. Why? Because spinach is gritty. You know, I don't really like the stems very much, so I'm not gonna take them all off. I'm gonna take some of them off, especially those taller ones. Taller leaves. But spinach is good. We love our spinach. I'm gonna do it until I can fit them in the pot, basically. All right, oh. I'm gonna do a few at a time, I don't have to do one at a time. That one fits, these ones are. Bad spinach leaves, good, good, good. That one's good. Stems, goodbye. Mainly it's gonna help me wash, so that's why. We're taking out some stems. And if you bought like the fresh baby spinach, you probably wouldn't have to do this. There we go. Well, that's okay. We can do it. It's not that much work. The thing is, you won't actually see me wash the spinach. You will see the effects. Get too big, get too big, get too big. Okay, okay. Almost there. Almost there. Almost there. One more. No. Okay, okay. We're good. We're good. Couple more, couple more. Taking off the larger stems because I like these stems. If you like them, keep them in. All right, so now we're gonna wash our spinach. Soak it up. Get all the spinach leaves. 
soaked in the water. Okay, that's going to take a while to put water in there. Let that ride up. All right, so into. Yeah, we're going to let me let me read the recipe, but I'm going to soak it the way I usually I think you should do. I pepper it in a large bowl. Mix with fork till uh -huh, but only. We're not doing the, the blender. One cup of spinach, half a cup of chicken. So everything except the spinach and chicken at first goes in the bowl. Perfect. So we're going to cut them right in. Get the basil. Now the spinach is getting there. Pretty cool. Let me finish with the basil. All this fresh basil. It's good stuff. You know, basil is actually the easiest things to grow. I mean, I have no green thumb. I, you don't even monitor the basil, actually. Well, I, oh, actually, that's true. It's, it's in the kitchen, so it's at the window. So basically, it's just it's at the kitchen window. And every once in a while, I notice that there's no water in the, the bottom basin. That's water in the basin. Let the ground, let the dirt soak up the water. And let the basil grow. It grows really well in light. Okay. There we go. Nice and chopped. Beautiful. Got the basil ready. All right. Let's get this ready first. We'll do the spinach. Let the spinach soak. So we need to get the uh, get this going. Let me see how much. Tailspoon of dried basil. Now it's about a tailspoon of fresh basil. It's good. Quarter cup of crumbled feta. A quarter cup. A quarter of a cup. Hmm. Basically, just a little bit of feta. A lot of feta here. Beautiful. Oh, if you never had feta before, feta is one of those dry cheeses. Very dry, very crumbly. Now let's try and get a quarter cup about. Estimate my quarter cup. Here we go. Very dry, very crumbly, very salty. A couple more. When I first had it, I did not like it whatsoever. I still don't like blue cheese, but I did not like feta at all. I'm going to chop it up a little more. It looks like it might be a little more than a quarter cup. Oh, it's okay. We are, we are, we love feta. It's nice. It's salty. It's creamy. If you melt it, it's still creamy because it's cheese. It's dry. It's crumbly. It's not a soft cheese by any means. Now, if you look at the recipe, it says you're going to mash it together or use a blender. No, nah, I don't need that. We're not going to do that. So I took this recipe from eating well. It came in my feed, my feed on my Google phone, not my Google phone. On my Android phone, I got a, you know, I just go to Chrome. And Chrome knows the kind of stuff I like to watch, like to read. And I said, hey, buddy, how about this recipe from eating well? It has chicken, it has spinach, it has feta, and it's a wrap. And I said, yes, please. Try it at once. Maybe they try it because I know Happy Healthy Dar loves this uh, stuff in the, the recipe. Uh, so we're going to stick that cheese back into the bag and close it up and put it back in the refrigerator. Better though, if you never had it, it's dry. But it is good if you like that kind of cheese. All right, what else do you need? You need the garlic. You need the garlic. One of garlic. Now, the original recipe I found that you eat well. Uh oh, 
Aha. I think. Let's double check something. Nope. Never mind. And it just shut off. It certainly doesn't have a timer. No, it did. It just shut off. Huh. Weird. All right. There it goes again. Perfect. All right, it called for um, the powder, garlic powder. I'm like, no, no, no. If you want to use garlic powder instead of fresh garlic, feel free. This is going to be a little more, quote unquote, spicy. Because fresh garlic has a little more tang, a little more punch than the garlic powder stuff. Garlic powder has flavor. Fresh grated garlic adds a little tang to it. Especially since this is not cooked garlic. It's going to add a different kind of flavor. But I do this before. In fact, I've done fresh garlic before. Certain recipes use it. Family likes it, so... As long as it's not one big chunk of garlic, we're good, right? Uh, because the garlic is all in the end, I'm going to rinse off my hands. There we go. Beautiful. Okay. Yogurt. How much yogurt does it say? It says half a cup. So I just bought this. Um, oh, look at that. 5.3 ounces. That's the weight, though. So it's about half a cup. So this is like the cream that we're using for. You know, if you're doing chicken salad, you usually use um, mayonnaise. If you want to be a little healthier, you can use Greek yogurt. There we go. In goes the Greek yogurt. That's what I did. And new spoon, not this spoon. All right. This is like the, you know, the you know, the mayonnaise, the cream, mayonnaise and chicken salad. So in this wrap, we're using something a little healthier, Greek yogurt. You know how Greek it's kind of a neutral flavor for the most part. This is plain Greek yogurt, a neutral creamy flavor. It's fairly neutral. Doesn't have much real flavor. All right, next. The tomatoes, the sun dried tomatoes. I think they're okay. Let's take them out and see. Yep, they look fine. Now, I will say these last quite a while. In that oil. And this is also full of flavor. Full of lots of flavor. Lots of flavor in here. Uh, if you want to overpower flavor wise, we're going to do about, oh, I'd say that much. How much does it say? It says. Table two no teaspoons yeah teaspoons a big one the thick one uh, where was it um dum -dum -dum. a quarter cup of cheese two tablespoons finally chopped a cup more there we go two tablespoons so what we're making now we are making the uh, what, what should I call it the sauce that's what I need for the sauce. We're making the sauce for the chicken. So you think a chicken salad, it has a sauce. It's mayonnaise, and it's basically just mayonnaise. A chicken salad sandwich, you're just putting in mayonnaise. You add mayonnaise to your celery, and chicken combo is not cutting very well. So let's, well, I'm sorry, I'm going to have to stand up. You might lose my face for a minute, but I need to really see what I'm doing here to really slice these in smaller pieces. Sun-dried tomatoes. The reason why we're doing the sun-dried is because the, 
the oil that they're soaked in. Lots of herbs, lots of flavor. It really adds a nice herbal essence. Not like the shampoo. It adds a nice herbal flavor to your chicken dressing. So basically, we're just kind of making a chicken dressing. Chicken's gonna go in here. We're gonna, once we make the dressing. Oh. Yeah, you can smell it's got the olive oil. It's definitely, definitely olive oil. But it's flavored olive oil. Lots of good flavor in that olive oil. Okay. Mm. Some pepper. Don't need too much pepper. About half a teaspoon, I would say that was. Some red pepper, flakes. A little bit just for a tint of spiciness. There we go. The red pepper flakes and the lemon zest. Let me clean off my hands and I'll get to the zesting of the lemon. Hands got a little oily there. Gonna zest up the lemon. Zesty, zesty, zester. So I actually have a lemon zester. So if you're ever doing something that needs lemon zest, you do want to get yourself a nice zester. So I use this zester for making cheesecake. It's great to add a little lemon zest or orange zest into the cheesecake. It adds a little nice citrus, bright citrus flavor to your cheesecake. Cuts through that fattiness, the, the overbearing of the sugar, put it that way. You know, the too sweet, and it cuts through that sweetness a bit. Adds a nice, a nice flavor. So we're looking at all that lemon zest. Yeah, that's looking good. So wanna, don't get to the pith. The pith is the white part. Don't want to do the pith, but you just nice and rub over your lemon peel, your lemon, your whole lemon. Get that zest. Pretty good. That's a good amount of zest. Mmm, you can smell the lemon in there. All right, so now what do we got to do? We definitely got to taste test this thing. So we're going to mix it up and taste test the sauce that goes on the chicken. Gotta taste this. All right. Stir it all up. Yeah, so this is kind of like a chicken salad. You know, if you're doing chicken salad, you can do a chicken salad wrap, but they'd be using mayonnaise instead of, mayonnaise raioli, instead of this uh, wonderful Greek yogurt combinations. This is, might be a little more Mediterranean style with the flavors that we've added here. All right. And this is the sauce that's gonna be added, that the chicken will be added to. Right, let's get a little taste of it. It feels like a little taste. Whoops. A little taste of it. Now the recipe says make it creamy. Mm. Mashed up. Ah, we're good enough. Let's do this. Mm. Oh yeah. You can definitely notice the feta, the spices, the lemon came right through. Mm. A little zing from that lemon. The oil from the, the to dried tomato. That, very creamy as well, the yogurt. Very savory. Hangy. Bursting with flavor. Bursting with flavors. That is good. All right, let's see. What was next? I'm going to chop up some chicken. Well, I'm going to chop, be honest, I'm going to chop up all the chicken and put it in there. What was this used for? Oh, I just got a bit of the spice. 
We got a little spicy there. Let's see. Oh, this goes back to the refrigerator. Let's put some of this stuff away before we get to chopping the chicken. Okay, the chicken, uh, the cheese can go away. Okay, everything else can stay. Uh, we gotta chop up some chicken, put it inside. So this was half of the chicken meat. And honestly, I don't need all of it. I mean, that right there, I think this seals the deal. I think it's enough chicken right here. This is most, there's some dark meat in here, there's some white meat in here. Little thigh, little breast, a little bit of everything. But yeah, you definitely wanna, I mean, if you wanna use two forks and shred it, you could, but I usually just chop with a knife. And if you want to take longer, and you know, some people love shredded chicken instead, there's definitely a place for it. But today we're just going chopped, chopped, cooked, and chopped chicken. Not cooked by me, cooked by Costco, rotisserie chicken. I mean, seriously, whatever you want to have a recipe, you want to do a casserole, you want to do like a chicken noodle soup, any recipe that calls for cooked chicken, I mean, you're going to have to cook the chicken, you're going to have to flavor it yourself, and you can buy your own thighs and cook it, or your own breasts and cook it, and get it ready for the dish. But anytime your recipe calls for cooked chicken, enchiladas, empanadas, Buy a rotisserie chicken, especially the Costco, which is only four, five dollars. I mean, five dollars for a nice, yeah, this is plenty of chicken meat. Let's try this. Cold chicken, oh wow, it's so good. We really love our Costco chicken flavoring. Mm. Costco chicken, good stuff. All right, now let's put it in. You may have noticed that the skin is still there. And if you want to take the skin off, you can. But we enjoy the flavor of the skin too. Let's put all the chicken in the bowl. And that's plenty of chicken. I did not need the other chicken parts either. That's okay. I can go in the chicken pot pie that I'm going to make. Probably could use more chicken. So what we're going to do is, because on Tuesday, I'm going to be coming home late on Tuesday from work. Often, I will cook after I get home from work, but on days when I'm going to be late on Tuesday, I don't really have as much time to cook, and you don't want to eat at 8.30. So what I do is I usually create something so that the family, the wife, or the daughter, can cook, can cook, put in the oven, in the oven usually while I am in my meeting. Now it's got to mix this all together. Nice and thoroughly. Yeah, yeah. Get that get the sauce with the chicken. Yeah. Trying the consistency that you would have what is that thing called? In a chicken salad. Yeah, so I would, um, so I basically on Monday night, I'll be preparing the dish, the chicken pot pie that they'll then put in the oven on Tuesday so that it'll be hot and ready when I get home instead of waiting until oh, a much later hour or buying something out and bringing it home. I mean, that's always something that families like to do. Buy something, and bring it home, take out. We have gotten out of the, you know, restaurant stuff. Now, we're not very big on restaurants anymore. You just learn to cook, make your own food, 
you can buy cheaper meals this way. Not buying the ready-made meals either. No. All right, so let's take. All right, so of course, gotta take a taste. Maybe I'll need more salt. <laughs> I didn't put any salt in actually, right? Let's take a taste, so let's see what it's like. Mmm. Oh, that is very good. Mmm. Mm -mm. With the previously flavored chicken from Costco. We don't need salt. Salt's a need. Oh. Got the flavoring that came from the rotisserie chicken. A little bit of that spice from that red pepper. You know, the lemon zest. Taking a nice citrusy note. And you know, the Greek yogurt is what's basically putting it all together. Basically, the Greek yogurt is just there to make it stick. Uh, the herbal essences, the herbness, herbiness of the tomatoes. It's ready. Uh, let's get the spinach ready. Let me, uh, first we're going to pack up the chicken that we didn't use. Into my hands. And now at this point, it's time to cook the pasta. Pasta will take about 10 minutes to cook. All right, there you, go. you can go right there, my friend. I'm going to use you all today. Oh, rinse off my hands. Oh, this is spinach. A little water. All right, so let me show you how we do the spinach here. So it's in this big pot, it's soaking. And you just gotta, you know, get all that sand off as much as you can. Let's take out some of this. If there's any spinach left after we do the wraps, we'll stick the rest in the soup. If you're doing spinach in a soup, you do it last. Just a very little amount of time. All right, so you know, you make sure you wash the spinach. And when I pull this tray out, all the water comes out. Beautiful. Put that over in the sink so that we can actually spin it dry. That's really what's supposed to happen. We take out and we dump. And that is how you wash your spinach. All right, then you gotta dry it. Drying it's very helpful. You just don't dry it. You pop up the thing, and boom, spin. This button will stop the spin. Open it up. Now it's not fully dry yet, but you can take it out, shake it up a bit. There's some more water in the bottom that you can because you don't want this spinach to, you don't want this wet spinach to make your tortilla all soggy. I usually do three spins. Three spins gets it fairly dry. That's two, it's getting much drier. Very little water coming off. Little. And third spin is just for good measure. I mean, it's pretty much dry now. There we go. Oh, so it's dry, it's spinning a lot more. All right, stop the spin. And our spinach is ready to go. Mostly dry. Yeah, I get that one out of there. You still look for the ones that maybe aren't good, like that one. Boom, you're out. Yeah, it's a fairly dry spinach. That one's out. And you can take them and so on still. Beautiful. It's okay, all stems, I know. Okay, okay, okay. 
Good, we've got spinach ready to go. Except we don't, do we? Is it big enough? It's, big. it's fine, it, it's fine that size. Okay. Now that the spinach, we're gonna start doing the wrapping part. I wanna clean off the board, dry it up too, so you don't get the tortilla all soggy. We need this knife again. This knife? Yep, this knife. I use another knife, but we're gonna clean off the knife. Wash off the board. Thing is, we want this stuff to be dry. The only wetness should be in the sauce for the chicken. We're gonna use a <laughs> tortilla. We're gonna use a paper towel. Now, if you have towels that you'd rather use, that you always use for kitchen, wonderful, do that. I'm not gonna stop you. Happy Healthy Wife wants her towels to be clean. So one of the things we do is we use paper towels for drying stuff that will come in direct contact with food. That doesn't get cooked. Kind of like that whole sponge thing, you know? Anyway, there we go. That's all nice and ready to go. All right, so now let's wrap. Uh, but first, the soup. All right, so let's open it up. Okay, I'm going to bring the soup back over first, right? Bring the soup so you can see it. Get this stuff out of the way. Got our wraps almost ready. Oh, I used that. That's what I used it for. The tomatoes. There we go. Okay. Yeah, a lot of liquid, actually. It's all coming from the soup. All right, so we're moving it over. Gonna heat it up again. Okay. That beauty can it once. One time. Right, so now what we're gonna do is we're going to taste the broth. Remember? Broth tasting time. Taste and see how good the broth is. If it needs anything. I'm afraid of hot foods. So I have one of mine. Oh, that is flavorful broth. Now to be more flavorful, I'd use the chicken broth. That's a good flavor to the broth. We don't need anything else. If somebody wants it salty, they can add salt or pepper. It's good as it is. Now we're gonna dump in the noodles. Should I set a timer? I usually don't. And I could set a timer. But we do wanna heat up. Heat up a bit. We're gonna cook the noodles till they're all dente, which I believe is like 11 minutes. And we'll check back on them periodically, because we can. So there we go, hold in the heat and let those cook while we wrap. Nice simmer again. Beauty. All right, let's wrap. Mm. This is gonna be a nice wrap and soup. You had soup and salad. This is gonna be soup and wraps. Right. So how do we do this? Well, the tortilla goes first. Then the spinach. 
And honestly, I'm only going to do three of them. That's how much we're going to eat. I mean, I guess I'll do four. But honestly, it's better when it's fresh. So if you already have like this stuff, you already have the spinach. So I know I'm using smaller tortillas than I think I did last time. Anyway, take some spinach. Creates a nice insulation from the tortilla and the wet chicken mixture. Also adds some nutrition, right? Spinach is good for you, you know? Add on, let's put this one upside down. So do them all that way, actually. Away from the curve makes it easier. Mistake. Goodbye, stem. Okay. Sweet. Do, 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 do. Got a good amount of mixture in there. Yeah, so it's better when it's done right, you know, freshness. I mean, there we go. That's a good amount of mixture. For this wrap, we're going to even it out, spread it out a bit. But I guess I will have to make some because I'm going to, you know, this is my lunch tomorrow. Mm, I'm looking forward to lunch tomorrow too. And, you know, usually I make it before, the night before. But it's just grab and go. Leftovers for lunch. That's usually what happens. So I guess I'll have to make four. One extra. We'll see. All right. There we go. Got a good amount of chicken mixture. So for wraps, if you've never done them, you pull up the side a bit. And it depends. You might just roll it or you might burrito it. I prefer to burrito it. So you roll up, you roll the sides in. This is more burrito style. You know, in burrito, really, you wouldn't roll roll. You would just flip it over once. We're going to do more of a roll, more of a wrap setup. We're just going to roll. Oh, that spinach should come back. Thank you. Roll it in. Roll it in. Yeah, this is, yeah I got a smaller set of tortillas than I did last time. And there it is. Oof. A beautiful wrap. All right, so now we got a. Bum, 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 bum. Get a plate. We're going to do the sides too. Yes, there are some sides. Now I'm not. I'm not cooking any sides. Let me, let me let me take that away from you. I mean, we got the soup, right? I guess I need bowls of soup too, won't I? Hmm. There's a wrap. <laughs> Look at that. Might be my shortest live yet. That was the plan. All right. So we want to get the a show one. Let's see if this is good enough for show. Then you slice down the middle. Boom. Oh, look at that lovely wrap. Oh, that looks so good. That looks very good. Two wraps together. This one isn't so good for show, so we're going to do another one at least. But that looks nice. We'll put it on the broken plate. We have some chip plates that we use. Oh, it smells good. I wish I sound right now. Let's take a look at the soup. See how the noodles are doing? They're getting there. Okay. We're getting there. Let's get another wrap. All right. Remember, it's good to go spinach first. A lot of good drinks. Good spinach. Adds a nice earthiness to the wrap, of course. If you rather have lettuce, you can use lettuce. You can use whatever green you want. Arugula, you can use arugula. 
I would re want, not recommend basil at this point in this part. That'd be way too much basil flavor. Overpowering. Okay, so this is going to have more spinach. Wonderful. Lay it all out. Yeah. Beautifully done. All right. Let's get some more chickens filling in there. Try to see if I can make one more beautiful. All right. That's a, that's a pretty good amount. Two good scoops, a little more. Uh, I wish this was like smell of it. We actually smell. This one's actually really going to be full. Maybe even too full, actually. I might have put too much. No, that's, that's okay. Now, since we're doing this burrito style, we're not going to put the chicken to the edges. That's a lot of chicken for this. All right. So let's wrap. So burrito style is you fold up one. Let's see. It's moving. You fold in the edges. Wrap style, you just wrap it up. You don't even fold it. You do not fold the edges. At least the wrap styles I've seen. Fold in the edges. Fold in the edges over the burrito filling. Okay, come on, come on, come on. Good. And then wrap. This one's really filled. Roll it over and wrap. There we go. And we slice it down the middle. You hear that spinach cracking? And there we go. It's ripped a little too. All right, I'm gonna do one more with less filling. Oh my gosh, this one is falling apart. <laughs> that one is really falling apart. All right, there's two of them. That one didn't stay wrapped very well, did it? Okay, move it like that. Perfect. Try one more time. See if we get a good one here. See if I can do it better. All right, less filling. And hey, remember that old commercial? Oh, man, you, you know, like, commercial, you're really old like me. There used to be a light beer commercial. Used to have a light beer commercial, or Miller Lite. And they had two camps. A lot of them were sports figures, so I saw a lot during football games. So, it was two sides about the beer. There, one side was less filling which is what i'm about to do we're going to put less filling in this one to make a beautiful one oh, that's so good and the other side was taste great so they always fight about whether the beer was less filling why was it why was it good was it because it was less filling or was it because it tastes great so this time we're going to do less filling all right there's one scoop and let's do another. And that should be enough, I think. There we go. So less filling. So I can make a beautiful, beautiful one. Okay, so I, my tortillas are small. That's probably why. Small tortillas. Okay. So now less filling, we can do this a lot easier. Let's move it down here. Bottoms up. Now have I had big burrito size? All right, here we go. And here we go. Let's see. That one I can break because it's thicker. Boom. Yeah, I'm thinking, look at the spinach. I don't think I really have enough that I want to put in the soup. And I can put some in the soup. All right, so now I'm going to fold it over like a wrap. Come on, stay, 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 stay. Fold it over like a wrap. Boom. This is the baby one. This would be Camellia's. And break it open. And there we go. Oh, there we go. Look at that. 
Yeah, this one's the picture. This one's the picture. There we go. All right. So let's set this plate for the picture. Here we gotta have everything. Gotta have the burrito. <laughs> the spinach, the chicken spinach wrap. That looks good. That looks beautiful. Gotta have the potato chips. Gonna have some potato chips naturally. We're gonna have some. Well, that's not for us. I'm um, gonna have some <coughs> macaroni salad to go with it too. Okay, so let's do some soup. Instead, we're just gonna move it up so you can see it better like this. There's really not much to reason drag it in there. All right, so let's take a look at the noodles. I bet they are nice and cooked now. Yep, nice and big, nice and cooked. I mean, I could have done eight ounces of shells, it looks like. I think four was good. Okay, let's put that away. Let's turn off, oh, should I turn off the burner or do we need to taste it first? Don't need to taste it, we already tasted it. It's good. Turn off the burner, get a soup ladle. My favorite soup ladle, if I can find it, there it is. Beautiful. I'm gonna have to put that in there too. We're gonna take the pictures, then we're gonna taste. And it's dinner time. So there weren't, oh, that actually, that scoop is a lot of vegetables, a lot of noodles. Not gonna do that much noodles. For nice. Okay, there we go. Okay, there we go. More zoop. Okay. Beautiful. So here. Uh, and now though, we're gonna bring it up to the real camera, right? Real camera time. Let's see where it is. Real camera time. You can see the real soup up close. Fresh, wonderful, homemade vegetable soup. Beautiful. Give me picture time in a second. You gotta move stuff out of the way for the pictures. You don't want the extra stuff for the pictures in the way. Let's take a closer look at the wraps. Come on, focus. Focus. There it goes. Beautiful wraps. Oh, they're gonna be so good. They're gonna be so good. All right, so now we get the picture ready. No, the soup, I can't put on the same plate. I was gonna try, but I cannot. I'm gonna eat one of the not so beautiful ones. Why am I eating not so beautiful one? One specific reason, because a small one is perfect size for, for Camelia, for happy, healthy daughter. Perfect size for her. Soup doesn't matter. Move this out of the way. Ah, uh, but what do we eat? What is this? I think I do need to. Why? It's gonna be reflective here. Let's see. Get this stuff out of the way. Dry it up. We are hungry today. Oh, this smells so good. Oh, I'm getting too hungry. Ah, uh, oh, the other stuff. I'm gonna show it to you. I don't know if I'm gonna put it on, I'm not gonna put it on the plate. Maybe I should, but this stuff. Well, we got just some regular Reese's Max out. You can find it at any, any grocery store across America, I'm pretty sure. But here's the uh, pickled vegetables. I'm gonna read the English on the back. It says Beijing hot spicy mustard tuber. That's what English says. Um, basically, it's um, pickled mustard and radish. It says it's radish there too. I'm thinking I want some on there. <laughs> 
<laughs> and the people are gonna wonder, people are gonna watch the video later after live and say, what is that stuff on the plate? Well, they're gonna have to watch till the end, aren't they? All right, so here we go. Mac salad, good Mac. Roni salad as a side, a <laughs> little unhealthy. Okay, a lot unhealthy. That's really unhealthy. But we like our mac salad. Vegetable. I know, I'm using a lot of spoons. That's why we got a dishwasher, right? Some nice pickled vegetables. Ooh. In fact, let's do this right down the middle. Right between the two. Ooh, yes. This has a nice spice to it, by the way. This is spicy, not spicy, okay. I grab it, okay, there we go. Stay. All right, next thing I'm gonna add to it, potato chips. So we are a family that likes to save money, and in doing so, we are using non-national brand potato chips. Little potato chips, there we go. And something else? That was it. Can't resist. I'm gonna shoot. Hmm. I forgot how the picture looks. Food is the front. I think this is it, right? Macaroni salad, potato chips. And spinach wrap. Ah, beautiful. Plus, the soup. Now, as is customary, it's time to take the picture for the thumbnail. The soup will go on the left because that fits the thumbnail better. Center is good, beautiful. And because I have those beautiful lights shining on the food, I do not need to throw on my flash, my camera. And let's see, I want tighter. Beautiful. There we go. Let's see. Perfectly out. And there we go. Come back. There you go. There's our new thumbnail that you'll see. A little later after live. We're almost done here, though, ladies and gentlemen. Everybody, we're almost done here, everybody. All that's left now is the taste test. That's it. Taste test. This wonderful dinner. Great light dinner. All right, I'm not gonna eat this one though. That was the picture one. I am going to eat the messy one. Tastes the same, just looks pretty, that's fine. Mac salad, you, you know what macaroni salad tastes like most likely. I don't need to describe that one to you. It's just your standard bias store mac salad. Potato chips, you know potato chips, but the wrap. With all this spinach, spinachy goodness, and the soup. Let's go with the wrap first. I'm letting the soup cool down a bit. All right. Mmm. Mm. Tortilla is really good instead of having bread. It adds the little bit of readiness to it, the flour. 
you know, white flour, spinach is there, adding some great nutrition. The star is really that chicken. The cost of your chicken really enhances the flavors you see inside, you feel inside. And the accents of the, oh yeah, I just noticed the lime. Sorry, the lemon spiel. Mm. Nice little accent of the lemon. Little citrusy note. Little very small spicy note, not very much. But all those herbal flavors mixed together. That, my friends, is a wonderful spinach wrap. Oh, healthy, fairly healthy. You saw it went in there. What's unhealthy is going to be the chips and the macaroni salad we're going to have with it. Let's try the soup. We got some noodles in there, corn, carrots, celery, tomatoes from the can. Still really hot. Gotta get some noodles. noodles. The shells, pasta shells, are nicely soft. Still really warm. Mmm. Oh, just a medley of vegetable goodness. Um, you, know, you got a little bit of sweetness because the carrot was cooked, and the celery in the oil add some sweetness to it. A nice tomato base. The flavors are in there. Oh, you can really notice the flavors. The corn, the peas are fine and good. The soup broth ties it all together and makes for a wonderful, wonderful vegetable soup. The noodles, I don't really notice them much. Mostly put them there because, oh yeah, but I, I did notice, I am thinking about them now, I do notice their texture, they are definitely, it's like adding some noodles in a soup, you know, chicken noodle soup. It's just little shells. Adding a nice little bit of heartiness to the soup that wasn't there before. Mm. Mm. Perfect for a warm night. <laughs> warm night. <laughs> Perfect warm soup for a cold night. Very healthy. Vegetables. Not vegetarian though, because you know, so we use chicken broth. So this is not a vegetarian soup. If you want to use a vegetable broth, you could. It would still taste good. Oh, it's just wonderful. You know what? I'm going to have to get out of here so that I can eat because I am hungry and this stuff is really good. So I hope you enjoyed watching with me the soup. It is a very good soup. My video on it doesn't do the justice um, that I have on making that soup, but that soup Tastes fantastic, especially if you're using chicken broth that you made it for your chicken broth that you made by yourself. Not broth, chicken stock that you made by yourself from the Costco chicken. Using rotisserie chicken inside this wrap just elevates the flavor of any wrap. And the sauce that goes with the chicken. Mm. Nice little spice, nice little freshness from the, uh, the lemon juice. Not the lemon juice, the lemon peel, the lemon zest as it is. Mm, just a wonderful dinner, ready for the family to eat. And it's time for us to eat. So I thank you all for hanging out. Oh, that maybe you might want me to describe this to you. Watch, this is crunchy. So this is crunchy and spicy. Pickled cabbage, you can see it kind of, um, it looked a little bit like kimchi. It's not kimchi though. Mmm, very crunchy, very Chinese spice. Mmm. A little spicy, not much. Overall, good flavor. It's not like your pickles. I mean, if you think about the cucumbers that are pickled, it's crunchy like those. But it's not like the vinegary flavor you get. A nice spicy flavor. I like this better than kimchi myself. But they have kimchi, but more like a pickle because it's crunchy. Anyway, so thank you for hanging out today. I hope you've learned some good ways to use chicken from Costco. If 
If you want to see more ways, I do have another video on using Costco chicken. Ten different ways you can use a Costco chicken, which includes a chicken broth, not broth, chicken stock recipe that's going to come out very soon. Make your own chicken broth so you never have to buy your own chicken broth again. But I hope you enjoyed hanging out today. I certainly enjoyed showing you how to make some nice healthy dinners. And this is fairly healthy except for the chips and the macaroni salad you don't need to have. But thanks for hanging out, and I will see you in the next video, which could be the chicken stock one. We'll see. Or it might be a live. All right. Have a good night, everybody.